Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Stacy, and I'm a bookseller and the events coordinator at Belmont Books. Belmont Books, for those of you who are not familiar with us, is an independent and locally owned bookstore in Belmont, Massachusetts. Before we begin, I'd like to let you know that we have a number of virtual events coming up, including Jennifer Steele discussing her new book, Exile Music, with author Alex George, and that is tomorrow. We also have our monthly bedtime story time with three different picture book authors on May 27th. You can register for these and our other events on our website, belmontbooks.com, which is where you can also purchase tonight's book, Cranky, right now. If you have any questions for Julie or Holly, please type them into the Q&A section and we will get to as many questions as we can. We're very excited to welcome Julie and Holly and we're especially happy to be with them on their launch day. Mm -hmm. I wanna tell you a little bit about them and then I will turn the event over to them. Julie Berry, the author of Cranky Right Now is the New York Times bestselling author of the award-winning Lovely War, which received seven starred reviews. She is also the author of the 2017 Prince Honor and Los Angeles Times Book Prize shortlisted The Passion of Dulce, the Carnegie and Edgar shortlisted All the Truth That's in Me, the Odyssey Honor, the Scandalous Sisterhood of Prickwillow Willow Place, and many others. Julie's first three picture books, Long Ago on a Silent Night, Don't Let the Beasties Escape This Book, and Happy Right Now, released in 2019. Julie is a board member of the California School Library Foundation, and after living many years in the Boston area and in Los Angeles, Julie has recently relocated to her, home, her hometown of Medina, New York, with her husband, sons, and two cats. Julie recently purchased the bookstore in Medina and is reinventing it as author's note. Julie enjoys quilting, cooking, piano, running, hot yoga, musical theater, and goofy movies. Holly... Hadam, I didn't ask you how to pronounce your last um, name, Holly, I'm sorry. Hadam. The illustrator of tonight's book is a picture book maker, greeting card designer, textile engineer, and the illustrator of the number one New York Times bestselling book, Dear Girl. Her other books include What Matters, Tree Song, and Jack Not Jackie. Holly likes to inspire others to find their magic and is a self-described tree hugger, tea addict, book sniffer, and mm -hmm. unicorn lover. She lives in Whitby, Ontario. And without further ado, I will turn the event over to Julie and Holly. Thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you for having us. Thank you to Belmont Books. You guys are the best. You have always been so supportive of me and my work. Belmont is such a wonderful community and I just hope that uh, you'll check out their future events and shop at Belmont Books, order books from them tonight and help make events like this possible. I am so excited to be doing this event with Holly. This is our first time doing an event together and um, we're just so thrilled to be here together. I'm delighted to have her incredible talents illustrating Happy Right Now and now Cranky Right Now. Yeah, hi everybody. So we wanted to just, um, I would say introduce ourselves but Stacy did a great job of that. I am curious about Book Sniffer. Tell me about that. <laughs> You don't smell books, really? <laughs> I guess I do. <laughs> That's all I do. I love the smell of it. If I could bottle it up, I would <laughs> spray it around. I could sell that. Is it yeah. <laughs> oh, to <de> book. <laughs> oh, de <laughs> oh, de leave, right? <laughs> <laughs> Make it fancy. There you go. <laughs> So I, I also noticed Unicorn Lover, and that made me wonder if that was at all how you became interested in Happy Right Now, because unicorns play an important role in that picture book. Was that a factor at all for you? I try to put sneak in unicorns wherever I can. <laughs> Even your headshot, as I recall, right? You got <laughs> I have a unicorn headband. Yes, I do. There's unicorns all over my office. <laughs> Well, when we when we read picture books, we'll look at unicorns. Um, there's a unicorns are important in happy right now, and then in cranky right now. There's this idea of people having horns when they're cranky, and so <laughs> you really went to town with giving even the pets horns. The furniture has horns. Everything has horns, which I just love. This one was fun. I could be funnier with this book than with happy right now. Definitely, yeah. Happy right now was. You know, all about sort of, oh, excuse me, maybe I should turn my ringer off. 
<laughs> the things you don't think of, right? When when the event is in your own home, oh, so yeah. you forget some of the, you know, like leave your phone in the car kind of thing. Um, so anyway, where were we? Um, when we when I wrote Happy Right Now, I was definitely thinking about how we can, you know, we can reclaim our mood to some extent and we can choose happiness and we can choose positivity. And the way things worked out timing wise, it came out not long before the start of the pandemic. And mm -hmm. so I think the timing was fortunate because right around the time that kids were coming home from school and parents and educators were trying to figure out how to help them and how to talk to them about the stresses and anxieties of this new frightening time, Happy Right Now just happened to be in Target and Target was open because it was a grocery store when other stores were closed. And, and I, so I think timing really favored Happy Right Now finding its audience. And then of course, Cranky Right Now comes out right when we <laughs> are just sick of it all. <laughs> we just want life to go back to normal. <laughs> so timely. <laughs> so, I'm not sure how we'll like, you know, flip the dice again and, and like predict the zeitgeist of about 18 months from now. <laughs> if you've got any ideas, I'd love to hear them. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't even know. Hug right now. I just want to get out of my house and hug random strangers, honestly. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, you know, we had a family gathering this past weekend um, and you, you know, we had to be very careful with masks, vaccines, a lot of, a lot of precautions, but to the extent that we could hug anybody, it was like heaven, you know, oh. it, was, it just like, I just felt like, oh, I've missed this. I just wanted to hold on tight. Kind of like, you know, that's too much. That's awkward, <laughs> <laughs> you know? but it was just so good. It was so happy to, oh. to, be to just I'm so jealous. It's like right. we're on our third lockdown. We're not allowed to leave our house or see anyone. So I'm just, I can't take anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. That's, that's right. We're, we're fortunate, right? I guess the vaccines are happening in an irregular way, but I'm sorry about that. Well, soon, I hope. Very, very soon. <laughs> I think so. The vaccines are rolling out quicker today. I got to pre-register, so hopefully soon. Oh, good. Good, good. Some hope. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm hoping for the border to open so that you can come on over from Ontario or I can go on over and we can... I know. Tea. That would be amazing. Have tea, my other favorite thing. That's right. That's right. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Holly, tell us about your um, fashion choices today. <laughs> <laughs> this is my cranky shirt. Because <laughs> really, who's not cranky on a day like today? It's so rainy and gloomy outside. And oh, I've got to show you, my, I got cranky socks on too. <laughs> I'm all crankied up. If I could have <laughs> cranky pants, I would totally wear cranky pants. <laughs> I think cranky pants is, is more of a way of being right like we just <laughs> I just am a cranky pants <laughs> <laughs> yes and the socks remind me there it's not quite the same as the end papers for cranky right now but you've got these fabulous end papers in both books in in happy right now it's things that make you happy and cranky right now it's things that make you cranky what do we a got a lot of those were inspired by my seven-year-old he hates <laughs> most of those things <laughs> let's see itchy sweaters yep spiders asparagus I have to disagree he there. hates asparagus <laughs> he can't stand it probably when I was seven I wouldn't have liked it either cooties yes Clown. <laughs> me too <laughs> skinned knees needles posing for pictures I love it <laughs> chores spicy food the dentist blue cheese <laughs> I love it this is fabulous well Shall we dive in and do a little reading? What do you say? And yes. I, please do throw co comments or questions in the chat. We love to hear from you. That's the one, well, one thing we miss about being able to be with you in the store is looking at your faces and, you know, sharing a laugh with you. So, so please do throw stuff in the chat so that we know what you're thinking. All right, I'm going to share my screen and pull up some slides. Uh oh. I think I need screen sharing turned on if that's okay, Stacy, just so that I can share some slides with pictures of the book. I think it's easier than holding it up. Let's see. Maybe we still can't do that yet. Well, I can I can read from Cranky right now and maybe we'll get that turned on in a minute so we can read happy too, just so you have a, a sort of sense 
of the series. Okay, Julie, I just made you a co-host. Oh, so see if that works for you now. Beautiful. Let's see how that goes. Okay, yes, looks like I can do it. So for context, I think I will start with happy right now, and then we'll go right on into cranky, the short. So happy right now by Julie Berry, illustrated by Holly Haddam, and note the unicorn umbrella. <laughs> I just want you to know, I spent a long time trying to figure out where I could get a unicorn umbrella made. I actually, oh, really? Yes. My husband found for me a, a green polka dotted umbrella just like that one there in terms of the color scheme but oh the, gosh uh, but the the unicorn features we could not find so oh <laughs> all right so when I talk to young people I talk about how you know one of the reasons that I wrote this book is that I realized how much of my life as an adult I had spent thinking if only I had blank then I could be happy how much of life can come and go while you're wishing something would change or particularly wishing you had something that you don't have and whether that's a pet or a toy or a particular kind of car or a job or whatever it is we often feel like happiness is this thing that's around the corner or down the road but not here and now because right now we're dissatisfied we don't have all that we want and that as, as I got older, I realized, you know, there's always going to be something we want and there's always going to be some problem or other. And so if we feel like we can't ever be happy until we're fully satisfied, we'll never be happy. And that's an awful waste because wants and needs and problems are part of life. And they don't have to stop us from being happy. And, you know, in the same vein, if only my problems went away, then I could be happy. So these were some of the thoughts that went into the hopper as I was thinking about writing the book. Problem was, I thought these sound kind of like, you know, older lady pro ways of thinking. How could I translate that for kids? And that's where Happy Right Now came from. And I dedicated it to Adam, my son. I have four, uh, but Adam always puts a smile on my face. And Holly, would you tell us about your dedication here? Amanda, she's my bestie from college and she's my biggest fan. She goes out and buys copies of every single one of my books, like multiple copies. And she gives them to teachers and to other people in her life. She's just, she really is my cheerleader and I can always count on her. Aww. You know, you think of those people and you just get happy automatically, right? I mean, just mm -hmm. remember the wonderful people in your life. Well, happy right now. I'll be happy when I get a puppy, a unicorn, an ice cream sundae, and a castle with a friendly dragon. There she <laughs> is, imagining she has it all. Or I can be happy right now. Now, there's no castle except a picture of one. No friendly dragon except a picture of one. No unicorn except a toy. No puppy, but there's a kitty. And no ice cream sundae that I can see. Holly, tell us about this one. Tell us what you thought when you first read these words. I felt like this is how I was as a little girl. I was always reading and dreaming and wishing I were somewhere else and somewhere more magical than just the boring everyday. And I was very excited that there was a unicorn in it. <laughs> I still want a castle and I still want a friendly <laughs> dragon. I just want the record to note I have not outgrown that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we have books for. <laughs> True. Go there anytime. Now, I this one is funny to me now that so many kids are doing school from home. I imagine a lot of kids just wish they could go back to school. Mm -hmm. But um, back in the pre-pandemic world, I imagine a lot of kids felt like I often did. I'll be happy when the clock clicks the last second of the school day on the last Friday before vacation. Like, you know, you just can't make it through a week. You just can't wait for the weekend. You can't wait for the vacation. You can't even be happy until then. Or you can accept where you are. You're in school, have fun in school. Or I can be happy right now. Anything you wanna mention here? 
I have to say my son hated going to school and he loved being home for most of the pandemic. And then eventually he was begging to go and crying that he couldn't go, which was, I'm like, seriously, who are you? <laughs> this, like, has okay. taught, <laughs> this has taught us to appreciate things we took for granted before in a lot of ways, hasn't it? Yes, it really has. Even for kids, even for kids have really learned to look at life a little differently. Ah, so then there's how people feel about you. This is a hard one because it affects us. We can't pretend it doesn't. How others think about us has an effect on us. I'll be happy when everyone adores me for being brilliant, brave, beautiful, popular, and amazing. There she is kind of wistfully longing for all this, all this positive feedback from others that, you know, would never quite work that way, but she's imagining people thinking, you're amazing, you're so brave, you're brilliant. Or I can like me right now and be happy just as I am. What do you think about this one? What, what went through your mind as you were kind of conceiving of this? This is the page that I connected with the most because even as an adult, I still struggle with this on a daily basis and especially with social media. And, you know, as an artist, you're always judging yourself by how many likes you have and comments you have and followers you have. And it's still a daily thing for me. And I have to remind myself that the likes doesn't make me a better artist. And I like, that's just nonsense you shouldn't care about. And it's just loving yourself and having confidence in yourself. It's so true. This, this, isn't, this is something that can sort of siphon your life away if you're not careful. Uh, you know, I remember being a, an aspiring author and thinking if I could just have a book in the world, then my cup would be full and my happiness would be complete. And then I learned, you know, well, then there, there's books, but then there's books that win awards or there's books, mm -hmm. that, there's books that sell well. And, and, you know, there's books that sell well, and then there's books that sell really well. And then there's books that sell really, really, really well and books that sell really, really well forever. And, it, you know, it, you can just drive yourself crazy endlessly so long as there's a competitive aspect to how you measure your happiness, or even if you're just letting other people decide whether or not you're good enough, you'll, you'll never be happy if other people get to make that determination. But if you can be cool with who you are, nobody can take that away from you, even if your likes aren't so hot or your sales aren't so hot or your awards aren't so hot or whatever. I really do think in some ways nothing changes. I, 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 I often feel like life is always junior high. <laughs> you know, or do, yeah. you, do I fit in? Did I wear the right thing? you know, but we don't have to let that um, bring us down. Oh, well, this one, man, this is, this is me. Uh, <laughs> what about when we've got a lot on our minds? And, you know, I'm always struck by how many kids really respond to this one. Because I, you know, you'd like to think kids can be more carefree and not so worried about all that they have to do. But I find that kids are very worried about their to-do list, their schoolwork, their sports, their commitments. I'll be happy when the worry monkey gets off my back, my chores are done, and nobody's grumpy. And there's always a worry monkey on my back. I, I recently had to upgrade my to-do list to a legal size notebook. Because oh. I, I couldn't fit my to-do list in my usual steno pad, so I need something to oh. And a lot of things are falling through the cracks I can tell oh, you no. <laughs> it's like I, I want her to do list <laughs> but or I can feed the worry monkey a banana and party with him on a jungle gym we'll both be happy right now why not now tell us about these pages these spreads Holly so I'm also a worrier I have my brain is like the tabs of your browser. I have a million tabs open and I can't focus on one thing. And my son is the same way too. He's seven, but he's constantly worried about everything. And this little worry monkey is how it feels like it's in my head, like just this 
scribble jumping bouncing around in there it's so true <laughs> <laughs> i love this idea though and you know it's funny i'll do events where i read this book to school kids and and it makes me stop and think about my own day and my own to-do list I mean, there will always be a to-do list the only time there stops being one i think is when you leave this planet so so if you feel like you can't be happy and relaxed and peaceful until everything's crossed off your list that will never happen so you have to find a way to sort of make your peace with your worry monkey and like coexist playfully with it and not let it get you and i i'm not altogether there yet i freely admit it but mm -hmm. i love i love how you made the worry monkey a, a playful friend here and <laughs> not uh, not just a little source of misery <laughs> <laughs> i'll be happy when the rainstorm slows the icicles melt the clouds leave town and the sun says come play the weather affects our happiness mm -hmm. Or I can be happy any day in mittens, in boots, or in soaking wet puddles. Wetter is better anyway. Now in the Northeast, we know this, right? We know that the weather is gonna do what it's gonna do and we've gotta find our own way to have fun regardless. But it was interesting to me living in California that that was harder for some people. Like <laughs> people felt really personally affronted by <laughs> rain and clouds, but you know, it's just what you're used to and what you, what you expect. And we don't have to let the weather get to us. Tell me about these spreads. I love the bunnies. I love the flowers. I love her kind of scowling at her little tulip. There. <laughs> so cute. This is me in the winter. I've lived in Canada almost my entire life and I'm still surprised by winter every single year. Like I've never lived through it. Like I hate it. I like winter for maybe a month. It's beautiful during Christmas. It's okay during January. Come February, I'm done. <laughs> and I want spring to come. And spring in Canada is not really spring. It can, sometimes it snows in at the end of May. So it's just, you, you never know what we're gonna get. So her face, actually, I feel like I'm more scowly in the winter than what how she looks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we have some lessons to learn from this too. <laughs> this is therapy for us. <laughs> well, and then there's our health, right? I'll be happy when this sneezing stops. No more sniffles and drips, no coughs, no ick, and I feel better. I love how she's just watching her friends trottle off so cheerfully to the school bus and she's got her kind of snuffly nose and she's just <laughs> feeling so blue and her little bunny slippers. <laughs> You're and look at that like embroidery detail. I mean no children's picture book has cooler children's clothing than yours. So oh, thank you. <laughs> it's true. There she is feeling blue. Or I can be cozy right now and snuggle down for a sleepy snooze. Honestly, sometimes if you're not too, too sick, I kind of love being sick because I can just mm -hmm. go to bed and leave it all behind. And if it's up to me to choose, why lose time being gray, being blue? All I need to do is be happy right now, whatever the weather. Anything here you want to mention? No, just I agree with you what you said that sometimes actually I don't mind being sick, especially being a mom. It's a little bit of a vacation. Like I just get to lie in bed while the husband takes over and does everything. It's great. <laughs> yes. yes, I know what you mean. As long as it isn't the stomach. Oh, that's oh, miserable. Nothing bad, just like, you know, mild. Right. Obviously. Well, <laughs> A <laughs> little, little headache, little, little mild flu symptoms, maybe. <laughs> Although that's kind of not funny anymore, right? Like, no, it's not. I was going to say it's not. <laughs> now we're paranoid about that. True. But, but what about when happy right now is a no can do? When the troubles and sadness are much too much and feeling my feelings is all I can do. Like a long goodbye or a puffy eyed cry or slow sorrows with no good answer to why. Well, that's okay too. So now we turn, you know, we can't always just snap our fingers and be sunshiny, 
you know, some things are just heavier than that, a little bigger than that. Anything you want to mention here, Holly? Just that I'm a very highly sensitive person, and so is my son. I cry all the time for absolutely no reason, and that makes me feel better. <laughs> and I feel like that's what makes me a better artist because I, I can bring that emotion to my art. So I've learned that I used to hate being super sensitive, but now I've learned that it's my superpower. Absolutely. The alternative is to not be a person who feels things deeply. And sometimes I think when our feelings are so big, we, we wish that we could feel less, but I don't mm -hmm. think that's the life we'd want if we could, you know, really choose carefully. I can breathe right now. In is one, out is two. Breathe again, fill my belly. Let it flow out slowly. Feel my body relax. Let my bones turn to jelly. Now this is of course one of my absolute favorite illustrations in the whole book and it has a sort of companion illustration in Cranky which we'll get to in a minute. But um, tell us about this one. Uh, I meditate every single morning and if I miss a day, I totally feel off kilter. It's just a way, it's like my 10 minutes of complete peace. And well, I can't say nothing's in my mind, but I'm more aware of what's going in my mind and it sets the tone for my day. Makes such a difference. It's so easy to tell ourselves we don't have time for that, but we don't have time not to do it. We don't have time not to breathe, think, whether it's meditate or pray or just be still, whatever that means for us, we don't have time not to reconnect with the source, I think. And it's always interesting to me when I do these workshops with kids, I, I teach them just, we practice together, just a slow breath in through the nose, out through the nose. And we do it a couple of times and they all comment on how much more relaxed they feel, much calmer, more peaceful in their bodies and in their, in their emotions, their minds. And I try to remind myself of that when my day is hectic, I can still breathe. I have to anyway, so I might as well <laughs> slow it down <laughs> and let that help. And then there's using our memory. Remember a now that was happy. Breathe. Borrow an old smile from a brighter day. Breathe. Know that happy will find me again soon. I think this is a hard one because it feels like our emotions will last forever. It feels like, like the, the grief or the depression that has found us now won't ever change, but it will give a hug and get one if you can nowadays, no. but, <laughs> but, you know, sharing some positivity with others has such a magical ability to both help them and help us feel so much better. Help somebody learn something new. I, I remind the kids that learning produces those happy chemicals in the brain. Anytime we learn something new, we, we jazz up our mood. And so does creativity. Draw a picture, bake a cake, talk it out, let it go. Just creating, even if all we're creating is words, um, that has a really powerful effect. Take a nap, take two. Big believer in sleep. Mm -hmm. anything, anything you want to mention here? That's what helps me when I'm feeling blue is I just allow myself to feel the feelings and not try to push it down. I give myself that day, that hour, no matter how long I need. And it always passes, always. Yep, that's right. This too shall pass, my mother always used to say. Mm -hmm. She's right. I'll be happy when I'm hopeful, cheerful, helpful, thankful reaching for happy until I can grab it. No dragons required, but I would like a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> so that is happy right now. Any final thoughts before we jump on to Cranky? No. <laughs> All right. Well, having done happy right now, sounds true. Our publisher reached out to me and said, we'd like to do some more of these. What should we do next? And I immediately said, Cranky. Because, <laughs> because I felt like it, Cranky is just such a fun space to talk about. You know, there's anger and anger's a thing. And sometimes we are angry and sometimes we have real cause to be angry. And sometimes we're angry, even if we don't. 
there's sadness and sadness is its own big heavy thing but then there's just irritated you know there's just that place where i mean you know if if, if you're facing a great wrong or injustice or great loss it's kind of understandable that you would feel wounded or angry but you know when someone steps on your toe or takes the last donut you're not really like allowed to blow up about it but you still want to sometimes and so that's kind of the the cranky space and i felt like a lot of kids have cranky times and a book about it could create a fun way for kids and parents and teachers to talk about being cranky to recognize it in others so that they can laugh with our little hero in here and maybe be able to turn around and laugh at their own crankiness and being able to laugh at it I think is the first step so I don't know I'm curious Holly how did you feel when they told you that we wanted to do book two and that it would be cranky oh my gosh I was so excited I couldn't wait because I'm I constantly I feel like <laughs> it's terrible but I feel like I've been constantly cranky <laughs> for the past year especially and having a seven-year-old who's who has moods, obviously, as a seven-year-old should. He's cranky. And I also, I like I have a little brother who used to be annoying. So that was also funny that I could put that into the book. And I just knew it was gonna be so fun to work on. <laughs> it was a delight. I had so much fun writing it. And I felt, you know, I could see our girl because I already knew her from book one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that really helped. And I just love the way you brought her, the physicality of her crankiness to life. I just love how she stomps around in these boots and her little, <laughs> her little hand there, her little hand gesture and her shoulders up into her ears. I just love it, love it so much. <laughs> so I have been so excited for this day for when this book comes out. So let's dive in. So I dedicated it to the sister just older than me in our family for Joanna whom I must have made cranky every day of our childhood, yet she hardly ever showed it. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice sister. <laughs> she, she swallowed a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> Holly, tell us about yours. Uh, well, it, it's for my little brother and we were like thick as thieves when we were kids. And it, like, we used to record our hearts together and we used a <laughs> tag team pretend we're tag teaming with our stuffed animals. Um, most of the time we were best buds, but obviously occasionally he would make me cranky. <laughs> what are families for? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, here we go. I'm cranky right now and I have my reasons. I'm cranky right now and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Anything you want to point out here? I just have to say, notice the unicorn again <laughs> and also i'm 41 years old but i still think potty jokes are hilarious hence the first. <laughs> well you know some things are timeless <laughs> but we can see that the mayhem caused by the younger uh, brother here that the missing leg on the toy unicorn and the stuffing that's popping out and and the 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 vandalism of this uh <laughs> lovely poster <laughs> can you relate to the mom here at all <laughs> i only have one so they can't be crank like he has no one else to be cranky with except for me and dad <laughs> well even <laughs> families can always find a way to be cranky right <laughs> maybe i should vandalize his poster <laughs> I wouldn't be so cranky if other people weren't cranky too. They started it. <laughs> They're acting like I have horns coming out of my head. I'm not the one with horns. And literally everything in this picture has horns. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it how he, so he's drawn horns over her. He's got his hat with horns. The cat has his horns <laughs> fresh and this cat just slays me. And <laughs> Even the chair has horns. Uh, but <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, I got to move my Zoom so I can see the words. Mom says if I'm so cranky, I should go straight to bed. I hate bed. I'm cranky right now because I get blamed for everything. 
for messes I never made and cookies I never ate and chores I never did. Wait a minute. <laughs> she realizes her mistake there. Well, maybe that one's my fault, but I was planning on doing them. I was just about to start. It's not my fault that certain people have no patience at all and the cat ate the cookies. Nothing is fair and nobody cares. We need to point out the uh, trail of infamy here caused <laughs> by the younger brother hiding behind the plant. <laughs> <laughs> not very well <laughs> yes and the mess and all the toys and, and the cat in the tipped over stroller looks like maybe <laughs> <laughs> I just love this girl so much she's so real to me ah, and there she goes stomping off misunderstood I'm cranky and crabby grumpy and gloomy I don't like my mood I don't like this food I've had nothing to eat since I don't know when. I'm hungry. I'm angry. I'm hangry again. <laughs> this picture and this bib. That she has. <laughs> I swear it looks like she's going to eat the reader. Like she <laughs> come out with her fork and spoon. Like, You're it. <laughs> she's coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Anything here you want to talk about? I know I'm kind of cruising on, but anything no, you want? To this is the page that my son, he laughs so hard because in our household, we say hangry all the time because all three of us, we have to eat. You have to feed us every one to two hours because all three of us get really hangry. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't had your Scooby snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Certain people, I'm naming no names, say the only snack I can have is a cheese stick. I don't want a slimy cheese stick. I want a granola bar. Not now, they say. Too much sugar, they say. 10 minutes ago, I caught them red-handed snarfing down a chocolate chip granola bar. You'd be cranky too if you lived with this much injustice. <laughs> I had a little too much fun with this one. I think <laughs> I just love the look of like righteous wrath on her face. She has this string cheese in her hand. And she looks at her hypocritical father and the hypocritical cat. <laughs> That's the granola bar. <laughs> I have to say, this again is inspired by my family. This is so totally my husband. Like we have been caught red-handed hiding with snacks because we don't want our son to find us snacking <laughs> because he'll want a piece of whatever we're eating. And sometimes mommy and daddy just don't want to share. <laughs> well, you know, it's not healthy for him to have all that chocolate. <laughs> You're very kindly eating to save him from its ill effects, right? I mean, <laughs> this is a noble act. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, here's our real nemesis. I'm cranky right now, but I'm not the one with the problem. He calls me names and hides my stuff and knocks over my castle and spills soda on my best books and scribbles sunglasses onto my masterpieces and uses my toothbrush. And does he ever get into trouble? Don't even get me started. <sighs> Tell us your thoughts on this one. This one was one of the fun pages just because just drawing the little brother getting into mischief was really fun. Like him drawing the sunglasses on her artwork was making me laugh as I was drawing. Again with the unicorn. <laughs> yes. okay. I always try to put a unicorn wherever I can. I was very curious to see how you would handle the use as my toothbrush. <laughs> I remember my editor being like, um, if, if I'm not making this up, and sometimes I make things up because that's kind of, you know, my gig, but I'm pretty sure that she asked about like, really, it uses the toothbrush? I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> there is a lot of toothbrush arguing going on. <laughs> my siblings, I mean, at least in my house, I don't know, maybe, maybe I failed as a mother to teach better toothbrush boundaries. <laughs> We just could not get this one figured out. Uh, they survived. <laughs> right? Everybody still has their teeth. I'm cranky. I won't change. I like it that way. 
there's our girl and you turned this into an animation which i love and gotten a lot of comments online from people who just love that oh and i i love this moment because i felt like you know what do you do when you're cranky i, I mean sometimes <laughs> you know i've had times when i've been so angry at you know one of my kids or something um and and i realized you know I ought, I ought to like, you know, pray to be less angry, but the truth is I like it. <laughs> Me too. The truth is like, I am on fire with righteous wrath and I, <laughs> and I don't want to change it. <laughs> and so I really, I, I've come to feel that like, you got to own that. You got to be like, here's how it is. I'm, I'm mad and I like it. I mean, and at least I think for me, if you can vocalize that, you're part way there because then you can be like okay how sensible is that but at least you you owned it you owned the truth that <laughs> like this is my mood <laughs> i'm angry that's my story and i'm sticking to it <laughs> so we gave her a little uh regimen to really um magnify and celebrate her crankiness i stomp around in my cranky boots I call this costume my cranky suit. I crown myself the cranky king. I crank all I like till I'm done cranking. I love how we made that a verb. <laughs> I make up loud songs with cranky rhymes and have a rip roaring cranky time. And the cat is not amused. <laughs> then I run a cranky victory lap till the cranky king needs a cranky nap. Honestly, I think this is why sports were invented, right? Like <laughs> if you just go move your body a lot and you run around, you can kind of get rid of some of that steam. Then chances are after a good tired flop, the cranky and me will decide to stop. The strangest thing about it, I think, everyone's horns mysteriously shrink. It must be there's magic in snoozy snores. The people who bugged me don't anymore. I love that little saliva there. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I've, I've read a couple pages here, but I want to make sure you get a chance to kind of chime in on any parts that were resonant with for you or any art elements you want to mention. I had fun with her boots. I love her boots so much that I'm honestly trying to find just plain rain boot, red rain boots, so I can draw the cranky face on the rain boot. <laughs> but I can't find red rain boots. I'm so upset. <laughs> well, yeah, I think we all need a pair of cranky boots, right? I mean, I, I really think there's a merchandising opportunity here. <laughs> We, we we should own our emotions we should wear our emotions and i think cranky boots are perfect mm -hmm. <laughs> and i loved i loved the the crown i loved this sort of like again horns and mm -hmm. and uh you know almost like it's very um wild man you know or not man but like like primitive and and you know you can sort of imagine something with well tree limbs and and I mean, it just feels like, like it's something very traditional from a, from a culture that celebrated nature. You know, it's got that, like that, that energy of like, I'm not doing a good job explaining what I mean. Do you know what I'm talking about, Holly? Like how it just feels. I, yeah, no, I do. Yeah. Like it, like it's got this, this raw energy that feels like it goes way, way back to, to rituals that were like all about nature and like that's how you can really embrace your your inner angry person mm -hmm. i love the cat here oh my gosh i love that cat's belly who's cranky not me i'm hardly ever that way if you're cranky i get it use my blankie don't sweat it let in some sunshine gobble some fruit groove to some music give that old horn a toot find a good joke or just make one up Pet a soft kitty, a romp with a pup. Take a deep breath, then take another. Do something kind for a sister or brother. And there we have our, what's the, there's a term for this kind of illustration. What is it? Is it a mandala? Is that the, what you'd call it or? No, mandala is 
like a very intricate circuit. Well, I don't know if it necessarily has to be circular, but it's very geometric. Okay. So the flower one from Happy was a little bit more like that, but not quite. And here yeah. we, okay. So maybe I, I'm wrong that there's a term. I thought there might be some sort of term for this, but I just love this one. I love how they're both kind of, um, you know, becoming peaceful together, but she's peeking because she loves her brother. <laughs> Go running and stomping and squawking. Go scoot. That is after you've borrowed my cranky boots. And that is cranky right now. So we'll end. Let's see, that's a good page to end on for that. So those are our stories. We are working on another. I have turned in a manuscript. Um, called Mighty right now. So we're Yay. working on that, trying to figure out how we can have some fun with um, ideas around being brave or maybe not brave in the traditional sense of like facing up to your fears, but facing up to the things that make you feel defeated, um, facing up to things that you keep putting off, you know, just, just a whole bunch of things along those lines where we need to kind of, you know, pull up our <laughs> cranky boots I don't know pull up our something and and tackle a problem that's staring us down so that's what we're working on next um I'd love to hear if there are any questions that anybody has we could look at that or Holly anything that you want to mention before we kind of look at questions and I can stop sharing my screen here let me see what we've got in the chat Oh yeah, let's see. No questions at the moment. Well, I have a question for you while we see if anyone has one. <clears throat> so I assume that you are probably presented with various manuscripts from time to time to see if you're interested in illustrating them. How do you make the decision? Because I assume you can't you can't do them all. And so how do you how do you look at the words on the page and what happens in your mind? Like when you when you read one that you do end up doing, is there a different response as you're reading that manuscript than primal? That's the word. Is there a different response than when you look at one that you may end up passing on? And how do you how do you recognize that difference? It will bring up an emotion. If I feel something right away, if I can picture as I'm reading, if I can picture the illustrations in my head, then I know I have to say yes. If I'm not feeling connected to the story or feeling any sort of emotion, maybe it's not a subject matter that I can relate to. If I can't picture it, then I have to pass because I know the illustrations will not turn out the way I want them to, to turn out. So those pictures come right away then in, in the do. case yeah. of a, as soon as I read the manuscript. Yeah. If I connect with it, it's there from the start. Huh. No kidding. So so then there wouldn't be a ton of change. I mean, obviously there are choices you make as you go. It's not like I, I assume it's not like in full technicolor detail in your brain, but it sounds like quite quite a lot of detail is there from the start. I get a I get a flow, I get a sense of the flow of the book of how I would want it to be right away. Hmm. That's so interesting. You know, every writer I know that isn't also an illustrator has such illustrator envy. <laughs> like we, oh. we, we all just wish we could draw. <laughs> oh. We wish that, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to paint a picture in your, in your mind and words are the only tool that we have to do so to kind of try to call forth from the reader's emotions a picture primed by words whereas you get to create a whole visual world and create those characters in in such a powerful way and and I don't mean to say that that the writing has no part in that I, I know it does but I I just love what it is that you're able to do and I love what it is that you're able to give to kids and how you're able to create characters and worlds that make these stories live 
for young people and and you know they're both bridges to their future literacy but also bridges to their future visual and artistic literacy you know and i just think that's so i don't know i guess i'm just gushing here with well, i think the grass is always greener like as illustrators a lot of us write our own books too but our strong suit is always the illustration part first mm -hmm. so and i know for me like i've been i i've written six books myself that I illustrated, but they are board books. So they're not as complex as the picture books. And I've been working on one manuscript for two or three years. So I wish that I could write more like you guys. So I think we're all envious of each other. Because <laughs> we just use use what skills we have, right? And 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 then we're fortunate. I feel so very, very fortunate that you were willing to take on happy right now and just so thrilled that we now get to do all these books together and I hope it never stops keep thinking of more emotions <laughs> shout out Ali Rosa has a question for you she would like to know if you've ever taken on a story that challenged you in which you learned something new as you created there was um my recent book that came out last week hair twins that one challenged me just because it was about the Sikh culture. And so it was something that I had to do more research of and try to be very respectful of the culture in my illustrations. So that one I learned and it pushed me as an artist. Have you heard responses from that community about how it went? There, oh, I'm getting like parents are messaging me saying, like, thank you. They're saying they're crying as they're looking at the illustrations because it reminds them when they were little and growing up with their dad, watching them, watching him wrap his turban. And of course, like back then, there were no books like this at all. Mm -hmm. So it's just amazing to hear the feedback. It's, this is why I do what I do. It's great. That's awesome. I love it. Julie, I have a question for you. Oh, sure. Uh, you write books for all different ages, and I'm wondering if you have a favorite age that you write for, and also if it's hard to kind of switch back and forth between writing for different ages. Well, I, I feel like, I feel so lucky that I get to write for so many different ages. First of all, I feel just so fortunate. I love writing, and, and I really do love them all. I, I love writing young adult novels, um, my, my YAs. Um, have taken on some some very serious subjects not you know in a totally serious way you know try to have a little lightness mixed in but um but still they you know they've explored some complicated themes my middle grade fiction generally has i i feel it has more room for playfulness more room for the fantastical or just for straight up humor and then when i write for the youngest age group, that's where I feel like there's the most freedom actually, because you know, you can be just wildly imaginative, you can be completely playful, in, entirely fanciful, entirely um, metaphorical even, you know, um, I, I'm not sure, I'm not using my words very well. Um, I feel like, you know, a, a story for young people can talk about an emotion or it can tell a fairy tale or it can, you know, look at a really, poignant slice of life like a care twins does um, a picture book can do anything if it does it well and uh, there are so many different forms and shapes it can take I don't find it hard to move back and forth I, I feel actually that it it liberates me I feel like I would get tired if all I did was stay within one age group and genre I after I've worked on a book I, I want to change I want to break it's kind of like food you know if, if you eat your favorite food over and over pretty soon it's not your favorite anymore you know you just variety keeps it interesting so that's kind of how it's been for me thank you anybody else have any questions thank you to philmont books thank you so much for hosting us yeah oh it is our pleasure thank you both so much for joining us it was it was really a fun event and of course we wish you the best of luck with the book and julie we wish the best of luck with your bookstore i hope it gets open really soon <laughs> thank and you it was great having you both thank Thanks you everybody for coming have thank a great you night so much. bye everyone
Bye-bye. Bye.